Good morning, all you virtual congregation, and welcome to this, our Good Friday service. Good Friday is an awesome day, a day when we focus on the most important event in his story. In terms of our Christian faith and the Christian calendar, there is no other day like it. I hope that aside from my message and beyond our own thoughts, I hope that we may all appreciate afresh the message, the most important message of all time. In this season, let us experience the unfurling of the essential gospel. May we be inspired, may we be jubilant. The theme that was chosen for today's readings on our roster was brokenness. I don't think any of us will have any trouble coming up with a list of examples of how today's world is broken. So if we just pause for a minute and think of your own personal examples Maybe some of you included isolation, loneliness, disease, death, broken hearts, a loss of livelihood, a loss of homes, loss of nature, perhaps broken relationships, a loss of the innocence of childhood, lost dreams and aspirations for the future, and more. With brokenness comes grief, and some grief is very hard to bear, never appearing to heal. The wounds and the scars can last a lifetime with a continual yearning for relief. Perhaps the children in our congregation would like to think of a time when something precious was broken and you brought it to someone who loves you to get it fixed. Can you think of that toy that stopped working? Or perhaps a time when you couldn't figure out how something was supposed to go together and you needed somebody with more experience or wisdom to tell you how to make something work properly. Often it's dad or mum who comes to the rescue. Almost a year ago to the day, Notre Dame de Paris, that mighty cathedral, was greatly damaged by fire. The world looked on as Parisians and indeed all of France felt this grievous loss, the loss of an icon of French life. But almost as rapidly as the fire consumed the famous towers, the French rallied to promise restoration. Over 600 million euros was promptly donated by various billionaires and corporations to help the rebuild of Notre Dame. The promise of something valued being fixed. However, the cathedral is not yet saved and has to undergo a delicate operation to remove fused scaffolding from around the old spire. This Easter, a virtual service takes place amongst the ruins. We must all wait and see if these promises will save this precious building. But of course, in the last year, Australia and the whole world has had plenty of its own disasters. Bushfires have consumed not just buildings of significance, but whole towns and communities lives and ecosystems. 
And now coronavirus, 19, is a very present disaster on a world scale, seriously affecting the physical and mental health of millions. The immediate response of governments has swung between the concerns for health and life and death decisions, as opposed to striving to preserve our economic well-being. Again, the promises to shore up the health system and balance this with sustaining any sort of economy would have been an in, has been an inordinate in scale, and we may wonder where all this money is coming from. Is this rescue package going to work? Can this broken situation be fixed? Where is our hope placed? We cast our minds back to Jesus' life and the political and societal context of his death. And perhaps there were similarities. Michael spoke last week about a people yearning for a new king, a political structure not dominated by Roman invaders, yearning for justice and freedom and preservation of the Hebrew cultural identity. Every person in his times would have felt the brokenness of their society. Michael indicated that as Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the populace saw in him a new king, the one about whom the prophets had spoken. We quote, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. We read that from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9. The people laid down their cloaks and sang, Hosanna, and indeed, here they must be seeing the fulfilment of their hopes. All of the readings for today speak strongly of the plan of God for the redemption of his people. Not just the Hebrew people, but as we read in Paul's letters to the Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 9, He, we read about the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. So if we spent the following hour reading today's scriptures, we would have the message and hardly any explanation would be necessary. The readings from Isaiah and from Psalm 22 are prophetic pointing us clearly to the crucifixion of Jesus. Please read them, if not now, then in the next couple of days. Psalm 22 begins with these familiar words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And of course we hear these words again from the mouth of Jesus as he hangs upon the cross. Throughout the Gospel reading of John, we read repeatedly that things happened, quote, so that scripture would be fulfilled. And here are some examples. As Jesus hands himself over to his captors in the Garden of Gethsemane, he insists that his disciples go free. And I quote, this happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Simon Peter has a very personal experience of the fulfilment of that which was prophesied by Jesus himself. All of the four Gospels 
record this event, that before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. We imagine how Peter must have felt as the rooster crowed for the third time. And another example in John, after handing over the care of his mother, Jesus, quote, knowing that everything had now been finished and so the scripture would be fulfilled, he said, I am thirsty. And when he had received the drink, he added, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him. The crucifixion account is grim and horrible, and Jesus knew what he was in for. And where now were the crowds that saw Jesus as the Messiah, who had laid down their coats for him? Were they shattered in their faith? Did they not know that this terrible death was foretold in their scriptures? Did they hear the first line of Psalm 22 and in their minds think of the whole of that psalm? Could no one comprehend what was happening? Undoubtedly, they were struck with grief, hardly able to think, hardly able to see a future in which Jesus could still be present with them. How unbearable must the next few days have been for all who loved Jesus, who wanted so much to serve and obey him and see him rise to power. And yet, they were silenced and numbed by the horror of all that was in front of them in the crucifixion. And might we find ourselves asking the same questions of God in the midst of our troubles? How could this be? Where is our Heavenly Father? How could he let this happen? Who can fix things and make them good again? Make things work as they should? Who will relieve every aspect of our brokenness and deliver good news? As we ponder the ways of God, the necessity of sacrifice. Let us note that Psalm 22 ends with, quote, All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Even those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness declaring to a people yet unborn that he has done it. So here is the triumphal note. Here is the promise for us all. When Jesus, knowing that everything had now been finished, as the psalm predicted, he has done it. Jesus has delivered the ultimate rescue package that cannot be measured in billions or trillions of 
any currency. A package that is effective in life and in death. The resurrection message, the message of Easter Day, completes the plan, fulfills the prophetic voice of scripture, the wonderful wisdom and extraordinary accomplishment of the one who loves us and seeks to restore to good working order our very lives, indeed that of the planet. So today is an awesome day. We pause in the pain of sacrifice and anticipate the day of jubilation when we shall all proclaim he is risen. God bless you all.